What is up you guys? It's Katya Bulks. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video. So I'm just getting ready to go to the gym and we are hitting upper body today. So I'm going to take you guys with me. It's a Saturday so ooh, hopefully it's pretty empty. Um, and so it's not too crazy sitting on my camera. I hate that. Um, but we'll see how it goes and then I'll come back and we will talk about creatine and stuff because if you know in the past I have cycled creatine monohydrate but now have recently been going through a cycle well now I'm in like the second cycle of um creatine crealkaline creatine yes so when we get back from the gym we will talk more about that so stay tuned if you want to hear more about why I switched yeah <laughs> Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Darling. Darling Alright guys, so I had a really awesome workout. 
super happy about the lifts and how they felt. I finally got 95 for 4 reps, which it's been quite a while since I've been able to do it for that many reps, like the last few weeks or so um, that I've been trying to push 95, it's been for like three reps. So super happy about feeling the strength go up, It's it's been awesome. But yeah, so now we're back home and now I'm going to talk about why I switched from taking this stuff, this nice big tub of creatine monohydrate to this little thing called Crealkalin. So, and also talking about kind of like the differences and stuff between the two because there are so many forms of creatine out there. I've talked about it in the past, I believe. I think I did a video. I'll have to search through my archive of videos regarding creatine. Um, but I think I've touched about like all the different types and the best. And pretty much research says the simplest and best form to take is creatine monohydrate. So, I did do a cycle in the past. I have a video of like when I vlogged that and talked about like my experiences from the loading week to like one month post having been on creatine kind of thing. I sound like I'm a drug user. It's not, it's completely safe. All that kind of fun jazz. But why did then I decide to switch to Crealkalin? So first of all, Crealkalin, if you're not aware of it, if you haven't looked it up really, is creatine monohydrate but buffered meaning it's in a more alkaline state for your body it's weird science and i'm not even like a hundred percent sure of how like alkalinity and stuff balances in your body but i'm t here talking about how my experience has been taking creatine monohydrate versus crealkaline so why I switched to crealkaline, even though it's essentially the same thing as creatine monohydrate, is because a while ago I did try reintroducing creatine monohydrate thinking, okay, I'm gonna do another cycle. I wanna get stronger now that my calories are coming back up working with my coach. Um, but I don't know what it was, but my body just did not like it. Like last time I did cre creatine monohydrate, I did get some of the side effects of it kind of like not the bloating, but it, it messes kind of with your digestion. I've talked about it in my past videos, but it makes your, your passage, it just makes things a little more difficult and painful, I'll be honest. Because um, I'm just trying to give you my brutal honesty, you know, and so yeah, my stomach did not like it for some reason. I don't know if it's just my body is just always, you know, your body always changes and adapts and Things happen, you know, like people become allergic to things. I don't know, you know, I don't know. I'm going crazy. But yeah, so I did more research into crealkaline because I was like, wait, I've heard of crealkaline, I remember it. Everyone talked about it being a buffered version. What does this mean? And so essentially it is the same thing as creatine monohydrate. Ta-da! So one over the other, one's a little more expensive than the other. Yeah, crealkaline is going to be a little more expensive over creatine monohydrate. But I have not experienced the side effects to the same degree as creatine monohydrate. When I did first start taking it, like it did do the drying out of the fecal matter. Let's be real, let's be real. Um, and so it was a little difficult, but I was just like on top of my diet and making sure, you know, you have good enough fiber and stuff like that. So things were easy. <laughs> this may seem disgusting, but. I mean, for those interested in taking this, I'm just, I just want I just want to be bluntly honest to you in my experiences taking it. Um, what's great about it, you don't have to go through a loading phase. Yes, science has shown many studies that with creatine monohydrate, it's essential to go through a loading phase if you really want your body to start utilizing it quickly. Like, no, you don't absolutely have to, but it's gonna take longer for it to kind of like kick into your body and you to utilize it. So, with crealkaline, I never had to take it. And I found this because I was like, okay, it's already gonna be such a small amount because you actually get to take less. They say for creatine monohydrate, take five grams a day. Well, the loading phase is usually like for a week, 20 grams a day split up. And man, when I tried going through even the loading phase, my body was like, what's going on? And then, but jumping onto this, it was not difficult at all and it's only, you only take like 1.5 to 2 grams 
And perfectly enough, it's like for two capsules. So what I do is, even when it was on monohydrate, I would take you know a little bit before and a little bit after. So it's perfect to take one pill before my workout, and then I take one pill after my workout. So it's quite seamless and I did a lot of research in trying to find a brand that had a vegan capsule so luckily this one I found on Amazon I will link it below um, it's by designs for health I don't know it was the only crealkaline that I could find that had a vegan capsule so that wasn't gelatin so that's why I got this brand it was I'd have never heard of this brand before but yeah I found it on Amazon Amazon for life. So yeah, if you guys want to grab it, um, I'll just like link it below. Um, but otherwise, yeah, my experiences have been great on it regarding digestion, upset, stomach, whatever, those kind of same things that I experience with creatine monohydrate, I have not really experienced with the crealkaline. I love it. Um, they say you still do kind of cycle it in the same manner that you would with creatine monohydrate. So this is actually my second bottle. So I'm gonna do, I think about, depending how this next second bottle goes, cause it's six, it's um, 30 servings, so about a month. Um, I might do like three months on, one month off, because um, even though it's a lot safer on your body and you get the less effects like creatine monohydrate, it's still good to cycle it cause it is processed through your liver regardless. So if you are gonna switch over to crealkaline, I do recommend doing that. Um, there are a lot of brands out there. You can do pills, you can do powders, um, but essentially you're just looking for crealkaline as buffered creatine monohydrate. So yes, science shows that is exactly the same as monohydrate. If monohydrate is working for you, you're not getting any side effects or whatsoever, stick to it. I recommend just sticking to it because one, it's cheaper. You're gonna save money because this is a little more expensive in that sense. But if you're like me and maybe your gut is just a little more sensitive to things, maybe try crealkaline because my strength has definitely gone up. Like, and it's, and it's been a while since my coach has increased my calories. If anything, actually this last week he kind of decreased it because my I have been having some bloating regarding just like um, eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables. Man, vegan problems is like, you eat too many vegetables and you're like, why am I bloated? And my weight's up. And it turns out, yeah, I just eat a lot of vegetables. <laughs> but yeah, that's beside the fact that, I mean, yeah, weight is just a number on the scale. And But I'm just so happy that I'm able to increase my strength back up to where it used to be when I weighed about 10 pounds heavier than where I'm at now. So I'm really stoked because I used to be able to rep 95 for a solid like five reps. And then, you know, losing weight, you, you lose a little bit of strength and I was only getting to like three reps and I was stuck there. But then I was like, okay, you know, I wanna reintroduce cre creatine and then luckily finding crealkaline and using this, this being only like the first, not even week on this new bottle. Cause I think I just got this bottle like last week. Yeah, so maybe it's been a little over a week then. So about a month and a week I've been on the cre creatine crealkaline. And I mean, also with regarding my training style and how I've switched it up, like I've progressed a lot better. And so I'm super happy about that. I'm probably, I'm definitely gonna stick with it. I, I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do with this. I'll probably find a friend who actually takes creatine monohydrate and be like, hey, take this, I have this tub because I need to get rid of it because I'm honestly not gonna take it anymore because Twice I did try reintroducing it and twice it did just not agree with me. So I recommend Crackling for those who are like, oh my sensitive stomach. Don't worry about all the other forms of creatine out there. Science shows, and you can look it up, there have been so many studies that creatine monohydrate is like the number one when it comes to uh, the form of creatine. And luckily Crealkaline is just the buffered version of creatine monohydrate so it's just a lot easier on your gut and you take less and it's just it's wonderful and so I like the pill form because they did have powder form so that's another alternative if you're vegan and you don't want a gel capsule um, but I didn't want to have to like figure out the measurements if the scoop was I just didn't want to deal with that I was like pills are easier because it's two pills I take one before my workout and one like within 30 minutes or so after my workout 
so it's great and I have loved it so far and I'm gonna stick with this and stick with this brand because also it's the only brand of with a vegan capsule so I'm just yeah that's just my preference but I don't know if you guys do have other questions regarding it hopefully I'll do like a follow-up um, regarding my progression using creatine because it has been one month in and I don't know I feel good I feel like I've gotten a lot stronger this is like my current physique I mean <laughs> So this, that's, I love it. And that, I, there's nothing bad I can really say about it. I mean, just keep on top of probiotics and stuff like that just to keep yourself regular if you notice a little irregularity when you're taking it. Um, otherwise, yeah, give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you guys. Go check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I think I said it already, but if you have questions, comment them below. In case I didn't address something in this video, I tried to hit everything. This is just kind of like me splurging everything on the top of my mind. I did try to do a lot of like research and all that research said is creatine is no different than creatine monohydrate. And so I'm here just to tell you, yeah, it's no different, but one works with my body a little different than the other. So I hope you guys find that helpful. And if you did, yeah. Subscribe for more. I'm going crazy and I'm hungry, so I gotta go. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Go make those gains, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.